All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Arkansas College Football Podcast. Today, me and Nick will be breaking down the NFL draft. This year's cycle has just concluded. We'll be giving grades for each team. Today, we'll be doing the AFC, and then tomorrow, we'll probably be doing the NFC. Uh, this is a very interesting conference, Nick. This has really become the power conference, I would say, over the last couple of years. And kicking things off with the Baltimore Ravens, they're looking to get back in the contention. Eric Acosta has had a big week. These te- this team is always... Uh, you know, one of the best at drafting, but they also re-signed Lamar Jackson this week, and I'd say they had a pretty splendid draft. Uh, you know, I give them a B plus just because they only had a handful of picks, but I think this is a team that certainly just benefits from other teams not making the correct selections. You know, Trenton Simpson, for example, falling to the third round. This is a guy that could have been in the back portion of the first round. Exceptional speed from him. 6'2", 235. This is a guy that can line up against running backs and tight ends. I love him as a pass rusher. Great closing burst. The speed he has. Very impressive player in Trenton Simpson. Zay Flowers was kind of an expected pick at wide receiver. This is another guy who was, uh, you know, there's a lot of slot receivers in this draft, and he's certainly one of those more undersized ones, but he is exceptional, uh, you know, underneath, making plays after the catch. He also has the ability to win those 50-50 balls. He certainly plays higher than his 182-pound frame, 182 uh, pound frame would suggest. Now, this didn't work out a couple years ago, this similar offensive scheme with Marquise Brown, so we'll have to wait and see if this works out. But Zay Flowers, this is certainly a player that's going to uh, you know, make some waves in the NFL regardless. Tavius Robinson, kind of an underrated outside linebacker on an old miss. This is a guy who's certainly a slippery pass rusher, some nice hands. I'm a big fan of the last two picks. Uh, well, not the last two, uh, but two out of the last three. Kai Blue Kelly from Stanford. This guy was balling out at the senior bowl. He's a guy that can play press. Uh, you know, he's a very competitive player. Good ball skills. And Andrew Voorhees, he tore his ACL at the combine. Still put up some great, uh, you know, put up a great workout with his bench press. This is a guy that anchored very well at USC. He was a powerful run blocker. He was a mainstay in that offensive line for USC that helped win a Heisman Trophy. You know, what is your thoughts on this draft, Nick? I see you gave it an A minus, only a handful of selections, but these are certainly some guys that are going to be impactful for Baltimore. Certainly think they deserve an A minus from me here. Of course, they lost their second round pick by trading for Rokon Smith, Smith, which was a really solid move by them. They sent that pick to the Bears in order to facilitate that move. You know, I think Zay Flowers is a very talented wide receiver. Very exciting. I love the speed, but he also can contest for those jump balls, like you said. You know, he's a bit of a smaller receiver, but he makes it seem like he's a bit physical, even though the size may not be looking like he's that physical wide receiver. Very talented product out of Boston College. Really the only bright spot on what was a pretty bad Boston College team. You know, Trenton Simpson fell. We thought he might fall. You know, there were certainly expectations that he was going to fall. Very talented linebacker from Clemson. I thought he had good speed. I liked the way he got off the line. You know, overall, I think he's a very talented player. They really did benefit here. A lot of these guys fell more than they should have. I think, you know, Voorhees, you know, of course, the injury obviously led to him falling to the seventh round, but that could certainly be a very solid pick to grab that late in the draft. Really talented player. Also, Robinson, I think he's a very underrated edge rusher from Ole Miss. You know, I think he gets off the line pretty quickly. I like the speed on him. Great hands. This is a really solid draft class here for the Ravens. Not a whole lot of picks with six picks total. But I think they put together a solid class, and it's really got to be a good week if you're a Ravens fan signing Lamar Jackson and kind of ending that saga that we really didn't know if that was going to end anytime soon. Now looking at the Buffalo Bills, speaking of a saga that might not any, end anytime soon is them reaching the Super Bowl, really even the conference championship and winning that game. Buffalo's been through a lot of pain. They've sustained a lot of success over the last you know decade, it seems. They've been very good for a long time. This draft, I'm not the biggest fan of. C-plus, Dalton Kincaid, I think is going to be a great player. Good pick for them, but this was not a need for them. Obviously, I think they're going to execute uh, you know, an impressive two-tight end system with Dawson Knox, who's commanding, I think, an $8 to $10 million salary per year. Great route runner. This guy has phenomenal hands, plucks the ball out of the air. You know, he can get up the seam in a hurry. He's also a pretty impressive blocker as well. Kincaid fell probably a little bit more than he probably should have. I think this was still kind of the expected range for him, 26 overall. Osiris Torrance seems to be a very good value selection. Late second round, they got a guy who was an impressive, dominant interior offensive lineman. Uh, his tape against Jalen Carter was pretty good, 6'5", 330, coming out of Florida. This guy, he does a good job latching on with big hands, moves laterally well as a zone blocker. I think Osiris Torrance feels a bit of a need there at guard. And then Dorian Williams, he's going to replace Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, this is a team that certainly does not have many holes one bit, but that is one of them right there. A coverage linebacker in Williams coming from Tulane. Also put up a good amount of tackles at his time with the green wave. First three picks, Nick, I'd say are pretty good, but after that, not much. Justin Shorter is a bit of a project player, a former five-star, never really panned out. Uh, you know, certainly some untapped potential there. Nick Brocker, he's a guy that fell a little bit more than probably expected. You know, this is a guy who's 305 pounds. Does a good job with some pop in the running game. I think he anchors pretty well with some strength also. And Alex Austin coming from over from Oregon State. Him and Rajon Wright this past season for the Beavers, one of the top, more underrated cornerback duos in the nation. 
overall thinks it's a pretty sound draft for the Bills, but again, uh, they pick up Kincaid. That's not a need one bit. And this roster is pretty well constructed, so maybe I'm being a little bit too rough on them, Nick. Would you say that's accurate? Might be a little too rough, but I also agree. I don't like the Kincaid pick really at all. I think this is probably the weakest pick of this draft for this team. I just don't think it's really necessary at all. It doesn't fill a need here. And when they were picking in the first round, you know, there was still some available players at 25 that they could have used to fill better needs. You know, I think Osiris Torrance, he fell a little bit more than people expected. So at 59, that's not bad value from the former Florida offensive lineman who's, you know, a good player at guard. I think he's a really talented player. I like his speed as well. Dorian Williams, great pick, I think, there. You know, good linebacker at Tulane. I think that, like I said, it fills a need perfectly. So getting a coverage linebacker can really make some nice moves on the ball. I like him a lot. And I actually disagree. I think Shorter could be a great pick for this team. You know, project player. High upside here. I think Shorter, you know, didn't really live up to the hype a lot in college, but I think he has some great potential to be a really talented player. Also a product out of Florida. I think getting him at 150, that could be a really good pick if it kind of works out well. Also, you know, the last two picks in this draft for this team, you know, getting a solid guard in Brocker and a nice cornerback in Austin. So I think this is a solid draft. It's not, it doesn't blow you away because the first round pick, I really think disappointed. But overall, I think this is a good draft in the Bills. They don't really have a whole lot of needs. They kind of try and get over that hump. And, you know, will they get over that hump finally? Is these the pieces that can help them do that? looking at another team trying to return to the AFC championship Cincinnati Bengals I thought this was a pretty impressive draft for them Miles Murphy I've always been a big fan of his him falling to 29 probably a bit of a disservice for his skills 6'5 268 has great motor as a pass rusher has insane strength that makes him very valuable as a run defender as well uh you know the physical traits he brings to the table I thought this guy would have probably been gone in the top 10 certainly has that strength of course he's also an instinctive run defender I think this is a very good pick up for the Bengals they like to re, you know rotate the defensive end position wasn't exactly a need for them but I think beast uh, you know beefing up uh, the rotational edge rushing department is certainly the idea here DJ Turner in the second round at corner 426 in the 40 yard dash he was the fastest guy in Indy it's, you know it's gonna allow him to line up in the swap play outside carry receivers downfield and then at safety they pick up Jordan Battle this guy isn't exactly like DJ Turner in terms of speed, but he's an instinctive guy, a disciplined football player, very good tackler, trying to, you know, hopefully replace Jesse Bates. So I like how they short up the secondary a good bit. And then at wide receiver, Charlie Jones, a really good route runner. And when you have an accurate quarterback like Joe Burrow that can really put it on, you only need to create, you know, a half inch of space, really. And, you know, Jones, he has the ability to do that. Chase Brown, I think this is going to be a great value pick out of Illinois. Him and his brother, these guys are also very strong, incredibly shredded. He's a strength runner, um, effective runner as well. I think he has pretty good foot speed, gets to the second level in a hurry, powers through arm tackles. I think, you know, with Samaj P. Ryan departing, Chase Brown's really going to fill a void there. They're running back two spot. Um, the rest of the draft, not so impressive. Princeton receiver Andre Lavazias, Brad Robbins, I pick up a punter, and DJ Ivy, a corner that's going to battle for a roster spot. I think this, uh, you know, from round one to five, they did a very good job, Nick. How do you feel about the Bengals? I agree. I think the early rounds are solid here. Miles Murphy, very talented edge rusher, good speed, you know, great player. Kind of shocking he fell to 28. I think Jordan Battle could be a really good player. You know, he's a very underrated player in his time at Alabama. Good tackler, good leader, you know, back-to-back first team all SECs in 2021 and 2022. Very underrated player. I think Jordan Battle's a good fit. Chase Brown blew me away at the senior bowl, you know, very talented back. I love him coming out of Illinois. Good speed. Love the cuts of him. The footwork is fantastic. Ovasius, you know, he disappointed me at the Senior Bowl. You know, I've said it a few times on the show. You know, I just don't think he's very talented. He had a couple drops at the Senior Bowl. They were just terrible. Really just did not impress me at all. I was excited to see him play at the Senior Bowl, and his stock fell tremendously for me. I just don't know if he's going to be really a good NFL wide receiver. And then, you know, taking a punter, I don't really know if you need to take a punter then. I don't think Brad Robbins is the best punter on the board. I think Adam Corsak was a better punter here. DJ Ivy as well. Nothing crazy there. The draft definitely falls off very quickly once you get to day three, but I think the early rounds here were solid. Murphy and Turner are very good one-two picks here. Now, you got the Cleveland Browns, a team that had a pretty quiet draft. They don't have many selections due to the Deshaun Watson trade, so they didn't get started till early in the third round. Cedric Tillman, this is a guy that uh, you know plays with plenty of size, 6'3", 213, a taller receiver, pretty good route tree for the system he played in you know this is a guy that can really track the deep ball very well big fan of Cedric Tillman see Ika Ika a big fan of his you know mid third round there for him as well coming out of Baylor you know 6'3 35 you see Vita Vea play at Tampa Bay that's exactly what this really is a clone almost a guy that's got a lot of uh you know strength hand speed uh this is just a defensive tackle it's going to plug gaps against the run so I think this is a big pickup for them because this was the top need it was one of the top needs for the Browns. So I like Ika falling there. And Dewan Jones around four. This is a guy that could have potentially been in the early uh, parts of day two, but some injury concerns, I guess, allowed him to fall. This guy's massive, 6'8", 374. 
crazy length, massive hands. As a run blocker, this guy is just a complete brick. Uh, you know, he's not a natural knee bender or athlete, which is kind of expected with that much size. Uh, but everyone had him as a top 60 player. They get him in round four. Isaiah McGuire, this is a very impressive player for a Missouri squad that was loaded on the defensive line. A power-based edge rusher. Some really good length for him. Big fan of what they've done so far. Uh, the last three picks, not as impressive. Cam Mitchell, he was an impressive corner at Northwestern. Luke Weipler, I also do think that's a bit of a good value pick. He was another Buckeye that kind of fell. But when I talk about unimpressive, I'm talking about the DTR pick. I don't really understand this one. Watson just got that big deal. Obviously, everyone needs a second string quarterback that's going to be a good developmental player. And I think DTR, for this competitive, that certainly comes to the table. So I think it's a solid pick for them. But this, uh, you know, this roster certainly probably could have used some other needs. Um, but I think overall, Nick, I'm very conflicted. I went with a B. I had it at a B plus at one point. I think this is a really good underrated draft for the Browns. But I will just leave it as a B because in terms of overall impact players, I'm not sure how many guys will stand out. I agree. I'm going to leave it at a B. I think, you know, third round picks are very solid. Tillman and Ica, you know, we'd love to see Ica. Ica, very talented player out of Baylor. You know, home, you know, gets in home record. It's after the quarterback, very talented defensive tackle there. Tillman, you know, good wide receiver. Of course, injuries kind of damage his time at Tennessee. But he's a very talented wide receiver. Good after the catch. You know, nice route runner. I think McGuire, very underrated player coming out of Missouri. Good player on that defensive line. Luke Weipler, I couldn't believe he fell all the way to the sixth round. I was watching day three and saw him got picked by the Browns, you know, deep into the sixth round. I, I was definitely impressed with that pick at 190 i think that's incredible value potentially for luke weipler a good center good leader in in that ohio state locker room i agree with you you know i don't really get the dtr pick and uh, cameron mitchell as well i'm not really a big fan of that pick i think you know the dtr picks just doesn't make any sense for me really at all here seems like kind of a waste of a pick dewan jones as well it's not a bad player from ohio state to get there i think this is a very average class it's tough to grade a class like this because they didn't have any picks during the first two during the first two rounds, so it definitely takes away for it from me. But the seven players they got here outside of DTR, I think the six players there are very talented and could definitely impact for this Browns team. Looking at the Denver Broncos, a team that I think is really a sleeper to win the Super Bowl. They get Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, of course, expected to be much better than he was a season ago. They only had a handful of picks here. Following that trade, they're still reeling from. I think this was actually a pretty great draft. Marvin Mims in the second round, a guy that's got vertical speed. He can make plays after the catch as well. Throw him in there with that receiving core. It's already got Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. You get Tim Patrick back. I like Drew Sanders as well, a player that probably should have went in the second round, goes in the third. This is just a versatile linebacker that did so much for Arkansas's last year. He can you know match up against tight ends. He can come off the ball, rushes a, you know an edge, uh, an instinctive run defender as well, some good burst. I think this is a very good player. Maybe one more year at the college level would have benefited him significantly, but overall, He's going to come and make some type of impact. Riley Moss, a guy that also probably slipped a little further than he should have. Very impressive ball skills he showcased at Iowa. Uh, another guy who's very instinctive in the back end. Diagnoses routes very well. He's also a good zone defender coming from Iowa. They coach him up and Phil Parker's system very well. J.L. Skinner, this is the player that if he wouldn't have got injured shortly after the senior bowl, he probably would have went a lot higher, 6'4", 209. He's not going to be a cover one safety or anything like that, but this is a playmaker who is very competitive, can get through traffic, wrap up. He's a contact defender, a guy who's going to make plays in the back end, kind of like Drew Sanders getting into the backfield. Big fan of the first four picks they made, some really good value. Then Alex Forsythe, not a bad center at all, was you know, a multi-year starter for the Ducks. He's also a versatile lineman who's going to probably be a reserve. Uh, I would have liked them. I would like to see them improve the uh, you know offensive line a little bit more, even though they really took care of that in free agency. So I'm gonna go with a B plus because I'm not really sure how much Denver could have done. Um, but I think this is very sound, Nick. They got some versatility here on this roster. I'm gonna go with a B. I think it's a solid class. You know, overall, you know, Drew Sanders. I like him a lot. Come out, you know, formerly Alabama, then Arkansas. Great leader in that Arkansas locker room this past season. Great linebacker. I think he's got a ton of potential. You know, Riley Moss as well slipped a little bit. Good cornerback out of. Iowa, good, you know, good field vision, you know, high football IQ, solid player. Marvin Mims as well. Like the speed on him. I think people underrated him a little bit too much. Skinner and Forsyth, you know, that's not a bad sixth and seventh round pick, especially Skinner. The injury certainly feel bad about that because he was a very talented player, had a decent senior bowl. The injury just kind of sunk his draft stock. He finds a home in Denver here. I think this is a good class, not a great class. There's some serious good potential here. Now looking at the Houston Texans, I gave them an A-plus for the pick of C.J. Stroud because they did not overthink it like a lot of rumors were indicating. Will Anderson, right after that, you know, a couple minutes before they made that trade to move back up to number three, I said to my, one of my friends, I was like, I think they're going to probably move back into the top five here. I just had a feeling they would, and that's what they did. I've never seen something like this in NFL history, Nick. I don't think we're a team gets a great player at number two and then gets the top edge rusher right after that, after making a power move to trade back into the first round. Juice Scruggs, a center from Penn State. They hope to get some good, you know, 
pass protection out of him. This is a player that I think was maybe a bit of an overdraft, but he is a versatile player. He was also a pretty sound run blocker for the Nittany Lions. Tank Dell in the third round, phenomenal value here. This guy's a great route runner, smaller guy, 5'8", 165. So he's going to have to avoid uh, hits at the next level if he wants to be able to play for 17 games a year. But he has elite quickness and space. Again, a route runner, he is phenomenal at that. Later in this draft, they were able to pick up Henry Tioto, a guy that fell. Uh, out of Alabama, a lot of people consider him a top 100 prospect. Some good burst from him, active hands. You know, I think he can locate the ball quickly. I thought as a run defender, he improved significantly over his time at Alabama. Xavier Hutchinson, another great value pick. They probably should have been on the board already. This guy is not going to win with speed or quickness, nothing like that. But he's a phenomenal route runner. He can track the ball very well. Great body control from him. Jarrett Patterson, another center that can probably play guard out of Notre Dame. Overall, I think this is a very sound draft from the Houston Texans. I'm glad they did not overthink it with the second overall pick. And um, some nice versatility on this roster because some of the drafts in the past for the Texans have not been great. I think this one, they did a good job of collectively adding at each positional group. I give this draft you know, a plus for me here. I love this draft. I think when you have a first-year head coach and a huge market for a team that's not been very good, you got to make a splash here. And getting for the second and third pick back-to-back, -back, trading back up to get Will Anderson is a splash move. you got to make a headliner like that. Will Anderson has potential to be their headlining player on defense for the next 10 years to come. And like you said, they didn't overthink it. They took Stroud at quarterback for the number two overall pick. They had to do that. They had to make that move here, Stroud. I know people get concerned about the test scores. I know people get concerned about some of the potential, you know, Ohio State quarterbacks, this, that, and the other. But Stroud's a very talented quarterback, great arm strength, just an incredible quarterback top to bottom. Nathan Dell keeping in the city of Houston. You know, he wanted to stay there. He's a very talented player, underrated, you know, great value there potentially. The Juice Scruggs pick, I'm not the biggest fan of. I think, yeah, he's not the best center in the world there. I think they could have got a better center potentially in John Michael Schmitz around the same area. Henry Toto, you know, another Alabama guy to link up with. D'Amico Ryan's former Alabama player. That one makes a whole lot of sense to me. Jarrett Patterson, I think he's a solid player on the offensive line. Xavier Hutchins as well. Can't believe he fell as far as he did. Brandon Hill has some potential in that seventh round pick there out of Pitt. I love this class top to bottom. I think it's a really good class, a very exciting class. I'm a Texans fan. I'm loving this. We have two more AFC South teams on the docket. All three of these teams really boosted their roster significantly. Look at the Colts. I'm going to give them an A. Anthony Richardson, I'm not the biggest fan of his, but I understand why you took him at four. This is a team that struck out, you know, swinging multiple times in a row, trying to get a veteran quarterback to lead this roster. And it's just not panning out. So you have to take Anthony Richardson. Obviously, from a physicality standpoint, this guy is elite. 6'4", 244. He has great speed as a runner in the open field. Highly impressive. He can flick the ball downfield with ease. You know, the arm strength is there. He can really rip that thing downfield. Um, all around, this is going to be a player that has high upside, you know, maybe could potentially be better than even Lamar Jackson is. Uh, the biggest problem is his decision-making his accuracy, Nick, has been awful over, you know, the numerous games he started at Florida, which is, you know, about a year and a half worth of film. Uh, that was certainly a concern there. I'll get your thoughts on that. Julius Brent's a cornerback with some length out of Kansas State. Josh Downs in the third round. He's going to be a slot weapon for them. That's the receiving core that certainly needs a lot of help. You know, Michael Pittman obviously leads them there. Blake Fleeman did not have a great senior bowl, so that certainly allowed him to slip. This is still a guy, 6'8", 302. Did much better at the combine, which certainly helped him out. Um, he's a good uh, combo blocker. You know, this guy plays with a lot of heart as well. Uh, you look at the defensive end from Northwestern. This is another guy that tested very well. He kind of jumped up the charts in Ida Bamore. Uh, Darius Rush, a guy that also had a very impressive, uh, you know, pre-draft training session. I thought he was great at the senior bowl. It showed some great recovery. Daniel Scott is safety. This is a guy that can match up with tight ends and linebackers. Uh, this is certainly one of the more underrated players in this class. Uh, he was a multi-year starter at Cal. Tracks the ball well in the air. I think he can, you know, fill the alleys well against the run. Big fan of some of these picks the Colts have made. Evan Hole, maybe a bit of a reach there, but he's a versatile back to do multiple different things. Don't know much about Titus Leo from Wagner, Jake Witt from Northern Michigan, but those were late day three selections. Jalen Jones, he was a starter at Texas A&M. Probably fell a little bit more, but all three of those guys will likely be battling for roster spots, but I think the core of this draft, the Colts did a great job, Nick. How do you feel about the pickups here and, of course, Anthony Richardson? Certainly an A for me here. I think Anthony Richardson, I think he has a lot more potential than Will Levis. I think he's a very underrated player here. You know, I think people question some of the accuracy issues. I think it's certainly there on the film. I think Richardson is one of the highest potential prospects I've graded in a while at quarterback. You know, boomer bust, kind of like Josh Allen. The potential is just there. I love what I see Richardson. I think he's got tons of potential. This is a great fit, I think, for the Colts. They can handle this right. Julius Brents, I love the pick. The state disciplined player. 
hits hard. And then I also like, you know, grabbing a weapon for your new quarterback, Josh Downs, North Carolina wide receiver. Great speed. I love him a lot. I think he's very underweighted wide receiver. Darius Rush, you know, South Carolina cornerbacks, they continue to pump out incredible talent from Columbia on the defensive side of the ball, especially in the secondary. Darius Rush is another one of those players, underrated player there. Daniel Scott from Cal, very underrated player as well. Evan Hole, I liked him a lot. The senior bowl, good speed on him. Jalen Jones as well, you know, falling at 221, and they're a good cornerback. They address needs across the board. They went defense, they went offense. They grabbed so much talent top to bottom here. A lot of picks. This is just a very well-rounded draft class, and it deserves an A for me. Looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars, they already are set at quarterback. Of course, they're going to be welcoming be welcoming the three new rookies to the division. This division is loaded with young quarterbacks if they all pan out. 12 total picks for Jacksonville, 12 different positions. This is how you draft, Nick. Obviously, it's going to be a B-plus from both of us because some of these picks aren't flashy, and a couple of them are reaches. Anton Harrison, for example, Brenton Strange, a guy who's really good after the catch. Um, he's got to be better as a blocker, even though he is competitive. Harrison, you know, this is a dude who did not allow many pressures at Oklahoma. Powerful punch, good body control. Likely the Cam Robinson suspension. He's also probably not going to be on the roster next year as will allow them to, you know, reach a little bit here at the back end of the first round. Tank Bixby. Doug Peterson said they wanted to add a second running back. They went ahead and did that with Tank. I think this is great. You know, he's a patient runner who really impressed, especially in the back half of this year. For a one-dimensional Auburn team, he really had to take control there for the Tigers. Uh, this is a very good running back, though, Nick. He's not the greatest when it comes to pass protection or passing the ball. But if you want a guy who's got some vision and, you know, runs behind his pads, Tank's going to be able to do that for you. Uh, you know, guys like Tyler Lacey, Ventrell Miller. Lacey's a versatile player. Miller can play on special teams. Yazir Abdullah is a guy that probably should have got drafted earlier as a disruptive run defender outside linebacker he fits into this scheme he you know was a former uh you know he's a guy that was a walk-up outside linebacker for the Cardinals. we're gonna see what his role will be uh this is a guy that did good on stunts as well i thought this was overall a very good pass rusher coming out of louisville antonio johnson slipped a little further than he should this is exactly what they need though with safety they can play downhill or line up in the slot excellent selection there parker washington a slot receiver to go on to what's already a strong receiving core for the Jaguars. This guy's great after the catch. He can win 50-50 balls as well. Uh, Greg Schiano is a big fan of Christian Braswell. Eric Howell, another downhill safety. You can line up in the slot. And then, you know, you got three seven-round picks. Derek Parrish, he was a great defensive lineman for Houston. He's listed as a fullback, so we'll see what his role is at the next level. And then Cooper Hodges was a great guard for App State. This is exactly how you draft, Nick. This is not flashy by any means. This is certainly 12 different selections at 12 different groups, though I think that is just the ideal way to fill out your roster. The Jags have never attempted to do something like that. I love the strategy here by Trent Baalke. Again, even though a lot of these picks are not flashy, this is how you build a roster. Totally agree. No need to be flashy when you got just so much talent spread across the board. You know, Anton Harrison, I feel like was a little bit of a reach. Disappointing on day one. I think they could have done better there at 27. But I think Strange, Bigsby, Miller, you know, all talented player. Lacey, Abdullah, Johnson, fantastic. Hit after hit here for me. Parker Washington, Braswell. I love Braswell. Good player out of Rutgers. Hallett, Pittsburgh, solid. He's four sack, not bad players in Paris. You can play Parrish wherever you want. You know, fullback, defensive line. I think there's so much talent here spread out. They filled needs all over the field. They had a nice balance of offense and defense. They really drafted a good spread of players here. None of these guys jump off the screen at you, but I think there's some serious. I think Villa, Miller could be a very good player. I think Antonio Johnson has a lot of potential. Parker Washington, great potential to be a nice, you know, number two or three receiver. Braswell could be a great cornerback. This is a fun draft overall. I really like what I see out of the Jaguars here. They're they're addressing needs across the board and they're filling out the roster top to bottom. Now looking at the team that defeated them in the playoffs, Kansas City Chiefs, you know, pretty average grade for me, a B. I'm not really sure what else they could have did, though, because this roster is in pretty well shape. You know, they're in the, what have they hosted four years in a row now, the conference title game. Felix Unduki Uzama, this is a guy that I was really impressed with coming into the year out of Kansas State. He just continued to raise his stock. Great edge defender. Great burst off the line of scrimmage. I think as a run defender, he's also been really good. This is a guy that also forces a lot of fumbles. I think this is a very impressive player for them. It seems every year when we do mock drafts, we have edge rushers going to the Chiefs, and they just continue to stack up at that position pretty cost efficiently, I'd say. For she Rice, this is a guy that's probably going to be a wide receiver, 6 one 2 4 He's probably playing slot. This is a guy that does very well catching 50-50 balls, good uh, contact balance. He has very good uh, concentration as well. This is a guy that's not going to win with speed, but more so his physicality. I think that's going to be great for this team to have some more versatility at receiver. Wanya Morris, probably not the greatest of picks. This guy was not very good in his career after being a former five-star transfer to Oklahoma. Uh, you know, he has experience at both sides at tackle. 
I think he's got great power, though. You know, in the run game, I think that's certainly where he's going to be beneficial. This is a player I think that for them is going to be a bit of a project. He was a top 100 ranked prospect by most people, though. Shamari Connor, a bit of an overdraft here, but, you know, he's a guy that can play in the slot and line up in the back end of safety. That's, you know, positional value, so that allowed him to go a little bit earlier. Um, Virginia Tech, he was one of their leaders for the Hokies. Really good run defender, I'd say. B.J. Thompson out of Stephen F. Austin. Really good edge defender. Some good quickness. A lot of people like his length and his closing speed. Then Keadra Coburn. I've always been a fan of his just because he's so massive. 6'2", 332. Uh, you know, great personality, great football IQ. This is a guy that's just going to line up and plug gaps for you in the running lanes. Overall, I think this is a very sound draft for the Chiefs. Again, I'm not going to go crazy and rate it too high because I do think it was pretty average and a couple of reaches here and there. What are your thoughts on Kansas City? I think this is a good draft. You know, there isn't a whole lot for this team to do considering they just won the Super Bowl and they really are in the midst of a potential dynasty here. You know, I think Field Kazuma is a very talented player. I've raved about him all year. Great player off the edge. You know, a lot of tackles for loss. You know, absolutely eats up in the backfield. Good piece to add for a team that continues to seem to rotate wide receivers. Doesn't matter who it is. Mahomes can get them the ball. And if they have some talent there, it certainly can help. You know, Morris out of Oklahoma. I think he's a good offensive tackle. Nothing that screams off the page for you. B.J. Thompson, underrated player out of SF Austin. People don't know a whole lot about him. You know, Coburn as well from Texas. Good player. Nice value at 194. I think this is a good draft. When you look at a team like Kansas City, it's kind of tough to grade because they have so much talent over the place. They don't really have a whole lot of needs. But I'm going to give it a B plus because I think some of these guys could have impacts in the future, especially Rice and Azuma. Another pretty average draft, I'd say, is, uh, you know, AFC West rival in the Los Angeles Chargers. We knew they were going to get a receiver. Figured it'd probably be one of those slot guys like Zay Flowers. They end up getting Quentin Johnston, who can certainly play in the slot, but this guy's also going to be an X. 6'3", 208, a deep threat. It was great after the catch. This guy is phenomenal, winning 50-50 balls. Catch radius is phenomenal. A lot of people are upset that he's a body catcher, uh, but I don't care what he does after the catch. is really all that matters. If you come down with the football, that's great. Certainly a knock that I think people are probably over-exaggerating a little bit. Tui, Tui Pelotu, a versatile defensive lineman from USC. This guy can do a lot of different things for you. He absolutely carried an awful USC defense this past season. You know, he sheds blockers phenomenally. Just a complete game wrecker. He's not going to win with speed. He's not a twitch athlete. None of that. 6'3", 266, though. This is a guy that just wrecks havoc, Nick. Uh, again, he had, I think, 22 and a half tackles for loss for USC. Where would they be without him? Deion Henley, inside the linebacker. Complete gap shooter. This guy has great instincts. Uh, you know, he lays the wood when he hits. Um, Darius Davis, incredibly small receiver at 5'8", 165. He can make plays underneath. We'll see what they do with him, if they line him up in the slot or not. And then Jordan McFadden, Clemson guard. He was never that great for the Tigers, but I thought he was their best lineman for a couple of years there. Scott Matlock, multi-year starter at Boise State. And they want to go ahead and pick up Max Duggan, a quarterback that they hope to be a project player there in the seventh round, a player who's coming off a phenomenal season. Overall, I think this is a pretty average draft. For the Chargers, this is a team that I still would like to see them commit more resources to shoring up that run defense. They never seem to do that. Hopefully Henley, Tui Pelotu, and Matlock do that for them. I also would have liked them to see a running back considering Ekelar requested a trade. Obviously, that's not a hard position to find at. There was some good value to do, uh, you know, to fill that role that Ekelar had, and they opted not to do that. I agree. I think they should have grabbed the running back at some point. I think Quentin Johnson is not the best fit here for, for Los Angeles. I think they could have done better with the wide receivers available during that string of receivers that went. Tui Pelotu is a very talented player from USC. Incredible. You know, gets after it. A lot of sacks. Great year. I think it's a good value there at 54. Henley as well. I think it's a good linebacker. Neither guy are fantastic against the run, though, so definitely a question marks there. You know, Darius Davis as well, another TCU wide receiver, good player. And then, you know, a third TCU player there, Max Duggan. Of course, Max Duggan, I figured he would get drafted at some point. Nice kid, very cool guy. Played well, played okay at the Senior Bowl. Of course, had a historic season at TCU. Matt Locke's not a bad player, a 200, good defensive tackle, like the size and him, nice speed. So this is not an incredible draft by stretch of imagination. They really just didn't seem to fill the needs they should have. I think this is an okay draft, but it just doesn't really blow me away because they really could have filled better needs across the board. Look at another AFC West team, the Las Vegas Raiders. They went ahead and went off Tyree Wilson. This is a high upside player, great strength. He does a good job with his length of getting to the quarterback. I think he's phenomenal with chasing down running backs as well. Great size, nice strength. This is a guy that's certainly ready for the NFL at 6'6", 271, like the pick they got there at number seven. Michael Mayer, this is an excellent pick. This guy probably could have went in the early part of the first round, slipped a little bit for whatever reason that is, 6'5", 250. Great blocker, a very savvy route runner, physicality when getting separation. I think he's a great route runner for them, and they're very thin at tight ends. So, I mean, this is a great fantasy play next year, I would say. Raiders getting Jimmy G and picking up a nice tight end here, Michael Mayer, who's certainly going to be a big part of this offense 
Byron Young, not the biggest fan of this pick, bit of a reach here. He never really shined at Alabama. They did need to address the defensive line, though, so I do give him respect points for that. Um, this guy certainly is good at locating opposing ball carriers, though, as a pass rusher. Isn't the greatest, but he does have some long arms, so I think that there's something to work with there. Trey Tucker, a lot of speed at wide receiver in the third round. This was not a need by any means for them, so I don't really understand this selection. Is a talented player, though, so I guess you got to give him a couple of points on that one. Jacorian Bennett, early fourth round. This is a very good corner. Him and Deontay Banks were a phenomenal duo. A press man guy. So does a very good job of rebounding receivers. Excellent recovery speed as well. Has no problem in the 50-50 ball categories. Aiden O'Connell, bit of a reach here. This is a guy who certainly is a fast processor who gets the ball out of his hands very quickly. Shined in that air raid system at Purdue. I don't think this is an NFL-made quarterback, though. There's a lot of differing opinions on him. I think this is a bit of a reach here for Josh McDaniels. This is a guy that really struggles at having to uh, you know, make plays when things break down. He's not great against pressure either. So we'll see how that works out. Christopher Smith, you can never go wrong drafting a Georgia Bulldog. 4-6-2, though. This is probably not going to be a guy that can play in a cover one scenario in the back end. But he does a good job in coverage, breaking on balls. I think he's probably going to be a slot receiver for them. Christopher Smith coming off a great year for Georgia. You know, Nick, what is your thoughts on this draft for the Raiders? I also picked up two uh, front seven pieces, Namari Bernie and Nesta J. Silvera from Arizona State. I think this draft, you know, falls off pretty quickly for me here. I think the first two picks are fantastic with Wilson and Meyer. I think that's good value. Wilson's great value. They're very talented edge rusher. Un Meyer as well, very talented tight end in now the first round. I like him a lot from Notre Dame, but I think after that, it really starts to kind of fall apart for me. Byron Young does fill a need, but I think they could have done better there with defensive tackle. There were a few other options available on the board. Trey Tucker doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Good player from Cincinnati, but just it's not something they really needed to grab here. Bennett as well. I think he's a solid player, but I just don't know if it was really the best need or fit. Same thing with Smith. Aiden O'Connell makes no sense to me. I don't know why they would take a quarterback here. And of all the quarterbacks they take, it took O'Connell. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Bernie and Burnley and uh, Sil Silveria, you know, talented players, but just fall into the late rounds. You know, I don't know if they have really any impacts there. You know, Burnley might have an impact at linebacker, definitely a talented player who's got some speed on him. This draft just kind of below average for me. It falls off very quickly. The first two picks, though, were solid. We have the Miami Dolphins. We'll make this one quick. They have no picks. They're in win-now mode. Completely understand that. That's what the Rams did. It worked out for them. Miami only four selections. Cam Smith, pretty good pick in the second round. They're probably going to slot him. Uh, you know, as a slot defender with Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard on the other side. Running back Devon A-Chain, elite speed, pick him up in the third round. This offense, Nick, is absolutely loaded with Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. They also had Elijah Higgins, who is a big body guy, 6'3", 235, maybe will be a red zone threat for them, even though he played a lot of slot receiver at Stanford. And Ryan Hayes from Michigan, he was a multi-year starter on one of the nation's off, uh, best offensive lines. Only four selections here. I'm going to give it a C-plus because they did not address a single need. People say running back may be a need. Um, I like the Devon A-Chain pick personally, but still C-plus for this draft. I think this is not a bad draft. You know, I, it's not incredible, right? I gave it a B-minus. You know, there's nothing crazy here, right? Four picks. You know, Cam Smith is a great pick, right? So, again, another great piece out of that secondary from South Carolina. I like that a whole lot. Cam Smith's a good player. Devon A-Chain. Fills a need there. Good running back. You know, Elijah Higgins, people say maybe he play wide receiver, play maybe play tight end. I think he's got to play tight end considering the size and weight of him. He's got to play tight end for me. Ryan Hayes, you know, doesn't really jump off the board for me. Michigan offensive lineman, you know, you can't really go wrong there with a tackle from Michigan. Again, you know, they're in win now mode. They traded their picks for a reason, but I think Cam Smith's a solid player to get in the second round. Devon A. Chain could have some serious impacts here. I'll give it a B minus. You know, this team wants to win. They're not really worried about draft picks. Now we can have the New England Patriots. It's always hard to digest these Bill Belichick drafts last year. I think I gave them an F because it was so strange. I think they took two running backs. They took a quarterback. It was just all over the place. Christian Gonzalez, though, I've been high on him for over eight months now. This is a phenomenal press receipt, uh, press corner, 6'1", 200 pounds. He does very good. He sometimes gives up too much uh, you know, yardage in coverage, too much space. This is a very smooth change of direction playmaker. Showcase some good ball skills at Colorado. Versatile playmaker. I think he does a good job of mirroring with some quick feet. I just think the size and speed combo of Christian Gonzalez makes him such a desirable prospect. Patriots pick him up there in the middle of the first round. Keon White, 6'5", 285. This is a guy that's got plenty of power, some good speed as well coming off the edge. He can really crash the boards off the other side. Marte Mapu from Sacramento State. This is a Bill Belichick type of player. He's a rangy run defender, pretty powerful striker when he's in the backfield, uh, you know, because I have him listed as a linebacker, but I believe he played safety a good bit when he was at Sacramento State. Uh, he can also make plays on special teams. This is just a typical Bill Belichick player, 6'3", 217. We'll see his ideal role. Got to see him at the senior bowl a little bit. Going in the third round, Jake Andrews, a center out of Troy. Bit of a reach here, but he's a quick and powerful player. 
I uh, probably should probably he was probably a late day three selection to be honest. Uh, he ended up trading up for Chad Ryland, a kicker, very odd there, but he was very good place kicker for the Terrapins. City Soy, a very underrated guard out of Eastern Michigan. He was a four year starter who played some tackle and then moved the guard. And you know, he shows good ability to drive guys off the ball. And he's probably gonna end up being a very good player. Uh, Antonio Maffi from UCLA, another guard. They're really paying attention to this interior offensive line. Keishon Bouti slides to the sixth round. Not sure why. This is just a great route runner from the slot. You know, he had some drops in his career that certainly lowered his draft stock. Um, the open field vision from him is phenomenal. Of course, he didn't have the best season in 2022. And they went with another punter here, Bryce Mariner. Mario Douglas was a solid player at Liberty. Amir Speed never really did much in his career. And then Isaiah Bolden out of Jackson State in this draft. A lot of picks there from Belichick. They didn't exactly cover every need. Um, how do you feel about this draft, Nick? I'm going to give it an A- minus because I think these guys will be contributors. But Belichick, you can either give it an A- plus or an F. And, you know, that's always the beauty of these draft classes with Nick Lane. Yeah, it really is a coin flip here. Some of these picks make a lot of sense. Some of these picks make no sense at all. I was, you know, tossing between giving it a B and an A minus. I think it could, you know, go either way here. Gonzalez, incredible pick, right? I'm going to start with the positive. Gonzalez, love that pick a whole lot. I think it's a very talented player. Keon White, I think I like that pick a lot too. Doesn't seem like he was too thrilled to be drafted by the Pats. I think he has some potential here. You know, I think Keyshawn Boutte could be an incredible value pick if it really works out. Really talented wide receiver. We had him in our top 10 in a mock draft that we did kind of a joke back in July. He was going to be this supposed to be the star player here and just fell apart. He had some off the field issues. Drops didn't really help. I think he's really talented. Amir Speed as well. You know, Michigan State cornerback. I think he's got some potential here. I like him a whole lot. Antonio Maffi, another good guard from UCLA. And then you look at the bad, right? Jake Andrews, I think that's an overdraft. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. I don't really know if I like that. Uh, Matt Pugh out of San Diego State. I just don't know if that's a great fit personally. They could have done better there at the 76 pick. You know, taking a kicker and a punter in the same draft, taking a kicker, trading up, taking a kicker doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me at all. Taking a punter later in the draft, again, you know, not Adam Corsak, who I think is the best punter in this class. Demario Douglas from Liberty as well. I don't know if that's really going to make a whole lot of sense here, taking two wide receivers and a guy like Douglas who taking him really late. I don't know if he's going to have much of an impact. This draft is all over the place. I'm going to lean towards the positive side. I think Gonzalez can be a really impact player. I think Butte has so much potential to be a star for this team. But, man, this draft is weird. Bill Belichick is just a weird drafter. Yeah, they needed more offensive weapons, and they opted not to. And they went with two guys on special teams instead. So very interesting. We'll see how that works out. A- minus for the Jets here. Uh, they pick up Aaron Rodgers earlier in the week. Will McDonald coming off the edge. Uh, I don't know if this is who they wanted, but they were certainly happy that they were able to get him. Showcases great bend. This guy's a strip sack artist, um, a guy who's 240, pretty nimble on his feet for being that size. Uh, very impressive with him. They drafted Jermaine Johnson last year. Uh, Will McDonald's probably going to be more of a speed rusher here. So really loading up on the edge here for Robert Sala, Joe Tipman from Wisconsin. They didn't really need an interior lineman um, outside of the center position, so they do a good job of filling this up right here. Elijah Vera Tucker at guard, they're still hoping to get some good things out of him. They really invested in this offensive line over the last couple of years. It hasn't exactly panned out for the most part, Mekhi Beckton being one of those guys. This is a guy who, in Tampa, was kind of a late riser, great mobility and range as a run blocker, which you expect from guys coming out of Wisconsin. Carter Warren in the fourth round, some great value here, outstanding length. Uh, you know, he's a quick set, not a very good uh, run blocker. Israel Ibanakanda, he had elite testing at his pro day, and that allowed him to skyrocket up the boards, end up in the fifth round. This is a guy that had a very impressive year for Pittsburgh. It's so fun watching him in that, you know, I formation type of system. Uh, he was a bell cow back to them. Jared Bernard Converse, he's a versatile defensive back. Zaire Barnes adding some more heat to this edge, rushing, even though that's a bit of a reach there in the sixth round. And then the cap things off, Zach Kuntz from Old Dominion. This is a player who also was a phenomenal tester in the seventh round. This is going to end up being great value, I'd say. 6'7", 255, the blend of size, speed, and length. He's going to be a problem for opposing defenses to play with. Not sure why he was still available. I agree. This is a draft that's not too bad. I gave it a B plus here. The Jets have been really nailing the drafts the last couple of seasons. This is one of their weaker ones in that time span. Will McDonald, the pick didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I definitely was a little worried about that pick. I just don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. 15, they could have done a whole lot more there. Maybe gone for a wide receiver, to be honest with you. Joe Tipman, good center there. Solid pick from Wisconsin. Big guy, big bulky guy in the middle. I liked a lot. Carter Warren, not a bad offensive tackle either. Two pieces they add to address, but was a bit of an issue last year, the offensive line. You know, grabbing a running back as well is not a bad move. And then, like you said, comes from uh, Old Dominion. is a very talented tight end. Can't believe he's still available. As well, Bernard Converse, the cornerback of the LSU. I think he's very underrated. Got some serious potential. This Jets draft class is not anything special, but it's not too bad. And they just got Aaron Rodgers this past week. This Jets team could be ready to contend. Now looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think this is a team that had one of the best drafts 
this past weekend. Broderick Jones, they picked him up. They certainly need to address this offensive line, especially when it comes to protecting Kenny Pickett, who showed some flashes this past year. Very fast at the combine, 497. The upper body and the power he has in the running game, that flashes out tremendously. He had no problem handling speed off the edge in the SEC. Broderick Jones, I think this is a really good underrated pick. Joey Porter, they could have got him there at 14. A lot of people thought that was the selection. They ended up getting him first pick of the second round. Bowling that Clay, uh, the Chase Claypool trade with the Bears many weeks ago. This is a great value pick here. This guy is incredibly physical. You know, he's good against the run. He's in a helping zone. Ball skills are there. Joey Porter Jr., just a phenomenal pick here. You know, the legacy pick kind of as well. Keanu Ben, I'm a big fan of his. They got him in the second round also. This is another one of those guys who just fills run lanes. He has a nice swim move. The upper body strength checks out. Some good arms. Love his hand usage. Keanu Benton in the second round. Great pick. In the third, Darnell Washington, another guy who probably could have went a lot earlier. Injury concerns, I guess, fall, you know, caused him to fall here late third round, 6'7", 264. This guy's just phenomenal. Great athleticism. You didn't get to see him run many routes at Georgia just due to the way they wanted to use their tight ends. He's a phenomenal blocker, though, which is certainly another area they've really struggled at, Nick. Najee Harris has not exactly panned out the last couple of years. And a big reason why is because they don't have running lanes. Darnell Washington will help with that. Nick Herbig. A guy they got in the late fourth round. I mean, this is another player who's just going to do phenomenal things for them. He was a great outside linebacker in that 3-4. Uh, some nice counter moves. Does a good job at getting blockers off of him. Good range. He just flies around the field. A good motor. Another Wisconsin Badger. Uh, you know how those guys are when it comes to physicality and toughness. And then Corey Trice kind of capped things off here. They also got Spencer Anderson at guard. But Trice, you know, in the middle part of that seventh round. This is a guy that should have been gone on day two, I would say. Uh, he's a willing tackler. He's tall. A 6'3", you know, impressive foot quickness, you know, for the frame he has. I think the speed certainly checks out. I think overall, this is a great draft for the Steelers. Love it. You know, some of the value here. I looked at the most valuable draft classes, you know, metric on Twitter. They had the second most valuable draft class, 3.5 uh, picks better than the average value per these picks. I think it's a very talented class, top to bottom. Broderick Jones, incredible offensive tackle from Georgia. Great piece this past season. They traded Chase Claypool for a second round pick that ended up becoming the 32nd pick overall joey porter jr you and i graded him as an early first round you know mid first round cornerback probably the best second best cornerback in this class or third depending on where you rank him i love porter a lot i think he's a very talented player his dad also played for the steelers and won a super bowl there so kind of cool to bring in a former player's son i love that a lot kenny benton's a very talented player come out of wisconsin good defensive tackle Another Georgia Bulldog, Darnell, Darnell Washington. We kind of wonder where Washington would end up. It seemed like he was all over the place during the draft process, but he ends up here at Pittsburgh. I think this is a solid pick for them. I think he's a very talented player. I like what they can do there with Washington. You know, Nick Herbig's a good player. Surprised he fell as far as he did. 132 seems like great value for a guy like Herbig. I think he's really talented. I like the size and the speed out of him. Corey Trice as well, good player to Purdue, hard-hitting cornerback, not afraid to get in there and go for the tackle. And then offensive tackle, Spencer Anderson from Maryland. Good player at 251. You can't really hate that for me there. I think he's a good size. I like it as well. You know, A's across the board here for me. This is a very solid draft class. Now, to cap things off, look at the Tennessee Titans. This one doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This is a team that has had a lot of success over the last half decade. They decided to move on with GM John Robinson early December. They were well above 500. They're about to win. You know, they came a game away from winning the division once more, which they've done numerous times over the last couple of years. They're clearly in a rebuild of sorts. They're kind of feeling like, uh, you know, this team's potential is kind of capped out. So they're trying to, you know, changing directions. Good bit here, which I totally understand that. First round pick, Peter Skronsky. This was kind of expected. You know, I figured they would go offensive line as a big, nasty player. He's probably going to kick inside the guard. You know, this is a guy that has great uh, balance, good football IQ. A nice punch, you know, 6'4", 313. A typical Mike Rabel type of player. Uh, the length isn't great, and that's why he's going to kick inside the guard. But overall, this is a guy that was, you know, projected to go first round, you know, starting two years ago. So he's always been a high-end prospect. They get Will Levis. They trade up for him in the early second round. This is a guy that could have went top five. And they're not very happy with Malik Willis' development. Kind of given up on him very early. So I think this is a great pick in terms of value and upside because if he doesn't pan out, we don't really lose too much. I think it certainly works out. This is a guy that has elite arm strength you know a great quick release the physical tools and the intangibles are certainly there um but he has not did good in terms of decision making and being able to read the football field so we'll see what kind of work they can do with him the rest of this draft class nick doesn't make sense tajay spears you know derrick henry he might not be there too much longer 200 pounds is spears but this is more of a you know a deuce vaughn type player who's certainly a bit undersized he's a quick titch, twitchy runner he's not exactly going to be a bell cow at the next level he'll get involved in some way 
or another, but they don't do much at all with their number two back. So I don't know what Spears' role will be. Josh Wiley out of Cincinnati. This was certainly a guy that's got a big body, 6'7", 250, can make plays up the seam, tight end. Wasn't really the biggest of need for them. They certainly need more pass catchers. Colin Duncan, or Jalen Duncan, that is. Uh, well, this is a guy that some people considered, uh, you know, a great value selection, 6'6", 306, as a rangy run blocker. And then they picked up a UT Martin receiver, Colton Dowell. I guess he's a, you know, a guy who's got some speed. He's also got some length as well, coming off a big year for UT Martin. This doesn't make much sense. This draft, Nick, they need pass catchers like crazy. Traylon Burks last year, they picked him up. That's it since then. They've put in no effort really into improving some of the talent on the defensive side of the ball. Some of the guys they've drafted haven't exactly panned out. What is the vision here with Tennessee, who's entering you know a mid-rebuild, I would say, while being at the top of the division? So I'm not totally against this draft like you are. I give it a B plus, I think, because if they'd taken Will Evans in the first round, I would have tanked and he gave it a C. But they got Skronsky. I think that was a very important pickup. Very talented offensive tackle. My number one. Size, we can do, you know, good blocker, good hands there. Will Levis, you know, in the second round, I don't necessarily hate it. I don't necessarily like it. It seems like they got just a weird quarterback room with Tannehill, Willis, and Levis now. Levis, you know, the upside is certainly there, right? You know, comparisons to Josh Allen, similar to Anthony Richardson. But this is a huge gamble across the board, even in the second round. I love Tajay Spears. He blew me away at the Senior Bowl. I think Derrick Henry, we don't really know what's going to be going on long term there. And Spears could be a good compliment back as well. Smaller guy, nice speed. You know, I think Duncan, you know, very solid value there at 186. I actually think he's better value than you do. I think he's a solid offensive tackle. Like the size, like the hands with him, good player. And Colton Dow, you know, keeping him in the state of Tennessee, good player from Tennessee. Martin, speed, not a whole lot on him, but I think he's a very fast player. Nice potential there. They do need more wide receivers. They probably should have addressed that. This draft definitely is a, a kind of an odd one, but I think there is some serious potential with the guys that grabbed here. Yeah, no doubt. I'm not against Tajay Spears one, but I think he's a great player. I'm not really sure what his, uh, you know, role will be with Tennessee that was the only concern here but again he was the highest riser at the senior bowl was a big fan of his that week very strange draft for Tennessee so I'm gonna give it a pretty lowly grade there of just a B um that's gonna be for today's episode guys as always Nick I appreciate you joining me fun to kind of diagnose the AS AFC here I think we got some great draft classes and a few that we'll have to just wait and see on I agree. that There's a lot of potential with some of these players. I think, you know, Houston, Pittsburgh, probably my two favorites there easily. You know, I think a few other classes got a little bit of a lesser score for me. The Dolphins, you know, I don't really know what's going on with what they're doing. Of course, they're at win now mode. And, you know, I think there's some other drafts, you know, Buffalo kind of worried there as well. This is a solid AFC draft class overall, though. That's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.